We're back with another Abrams Report exclusive at a crucial former defense investigator. His office was raided the same day Jackson's Neverland Ranch was searched. Tapes of his interview with the accuser and his family seized. An interview that could become key to Jackson's defense. He's on the defense witness list. He's never spoken out before. I spoke with him before he was subpoenaed as a witness. Now for the first time in an exclusive interview, Bradley Miller will break his silence. But first, at the height of the alleged conspiracy, Miller was hired to keep a, quote, loose watch on the accuser's family. Miller says the Jackson team was concerned the family was going to create a story and go to the media if they weren't compensated for the accuser's appearance in the documentary that started this whole case. The documentary in which Michael Jackson admits to sharing his bed with young boys. They wanted to make a rebuttal video. Miller says the family's threats prompted him to get a statement from them on tape to refute any story they might try to sell to the tabloids. The prosecutors offer a very different explanation. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I asked Miller if it was possible that Jackson wanted to get this statement saying that nothing inappropriate had happened to effectively serve as a get-out-of-jail-free card in the event he came to need one. It is my belief, from what I was told at the time and what I observed, when they started making threats, Michael realized this was not a family he needed around him. And I think he would have done anything he could at that time to distance himself from them, or to distance them from him. The, the answer to the question would be no, though. So you're saying that Michael Jackson was already nervous that this family might make allegations against him. I don't know that Michael was so nervous. They were trying to do whatever they could to take care of what they saw as a potential problem, a loose cannon, someone who was very well knowledgeable of the 93 event or allegations and had threatened to do something similar. And that's why it's so interesting that we have the same cast of characters. You think the boy was up to that, or just his mother? From what I understand, the boy apparently is also, or was, very much aware of the uh, 1993 case. So you think the 13-year-old, 12-year-old boy suffering from cancer is thinking about the big payout from Michael Jackson? I will tell you, Dan, that this family, every conversation I had with them, every meeting I had with them, any interaction with them centered around either money fame, celebrity, and or possessions. We're back with another Abrams Report exclusive, my interview with a crucial figure in the Michael Jackson case. Former Jackson investigator Bradley Miller, he's on the defense witness list. He's never spoken out, but before he was subpoenaed as a witness in the case, he gave me an exclusive interview. Before any allegations surfaced relating to this case, Jackson hired a prominent attorney who in turn hired Miller to watch the accuser and his family. Prosecutors say it was part of the effort to make sure the family agreed to participate in a video to restore Jackson's reputation. Miller says it was for a very different reason, that he was told the family had threatened to make up charges against Jackson and go to the tabloids. The family apparently was aware of prior allegations that had been made against Michael in the past and had hinted that there was really nothing keeping them from doing something similar unless my understanding was they were very concerned and upset that they were not compensated for the Bashir documentary which had aired. So you're saying before any of these allegations were made that Michael Jackson was worried that there were going to be false allegations made? I think he, from what he saw of this family, I think he had come to the realization that they were probably capable of just about anything. What were you asked to do? I was asked to find out where they were, get in contact with them, let them know that I wanted to meet with them, talk to them, and get an idea of what was going on because my understanding was all of a sudden they had just disappeared from Neverland in the middle of the night. And so are they sending the private eye out there to monitor them? It, was, it certainly wasn't to control them in any way. It was to just keep a real loose watch on who they were meeting with and what they were doing. We then decided that before this goes any further, perhaps it's time to get a sworn statement from them stating what the circumstances were. If anything ever did happen, if it didn't. So you wanted a, a sworn statement just in case? 
Just in case, almost like an insurance policy. Uh, it was arranged for a few evenings later that I went over to the um, apartment of the mother's boyfriend in Los Angeles and uh, was welcomed, hugged by every member of the family. What did you say? I asked um, each of them if anything had ever, anything improper had ever happened. I asked about sleeping arrangements there and was told by the two sons that neither one of them ever slept alone in Michael's room without the other one being present. That nothing ever happened, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing sexual. You asked nothing them specifically, did anything sexual ever happen? I believe I asked if they were ever inappropriately touched or anything along those lines. And I was told absolutely not, that Michael was like a father. He was the only father the children had known. No intimidation at all to make her make this tape? Absolutely none, Dan. You're there by yourself? All by myself with my tape recorder. Any people downstairs? Any no anyone one. other than you call them beforehand to Not say to my you knowledge. better do this? Not to my knowledge. And what did the children generally have to say about Michael Jackson? Nothing but nice things. How how gracious he was to them when they were at Neverland, how much they loved being at Neverland, and how they couldn't wait to go back to Neverland. It sounds a little odd. There's this woman who hasn't made any allegations, you say, against Michael Jackson at this time. There have been no criminal charges filed. And there's this high-powered, well-paid private investigator. Not in light of what happened ten years earlier and the fiasco that that became. Isn't it possible that Michael Jackson had not molested the boy um, before you spoke to him, but that later on he did the things that the boy claims and that his brother claims? It makes no sense. What? It makes no sense. Why would he, especially with the, with the focus of the world on him? I believe this was right after the incident where the baby was dangled over the banister in Europe. And the eyes of the world were on him. And he was being investigated by this agency and that agency. Certainly, he, he would do nothing like that. There, there'd be no reason. And did anyone involved in the Jackson camp give you the sense that well, we got to cover up for Michael? You know the way Michael is sometimes with boys. No. 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 It was always characterized to you as the possibility of false accusations. It was always characterized as uh, nothing more than an attempt to extort money. And if they were going to extort money why make the criminal allegations as opposed to just suing them? well it's been my experience that if you can get a criminal conviction against someone it makes a civil case a slam dunk or much much easier 